So how do you know when it's time to transition from your nine to five or corporate gig into your purpose-driven business? I can't speak from the corporate culture, although I do know it's a very masculine, very masculine dominant culture for the most part, very much like our society. So I'm not going to speak to the actual corporate experience. I have always been sort of allergic to it, to be honest, because I really truly value leading my own, you know, leading my own path and really um, making my own decisions and not really the best at following other people's rules and regulations. And I really can't do politically correct. Um, I like, it's literally suffocating to me to not be able to say what I wanna say, when I wanna say it, do what I wanna do, when I wanna do it. And so I've always been an entrepreneur, but I can say that I was in real estate for over 10 years and at times that felt so suffocating. Like the last thing I wanted to do was hold another open house. The last thing I wanted to do was hop on the phone and cold call or circle prospect or, you know, reach out to people on the phone all the time. When what I really wanted to do after showing 10 houses, in 110 degree weather, sweating my ass off in Arizona. Um, and I love my clients. I love my clients. I love all my past clients. So if you're watching this and you're one of my clients, I love you. I love my clients. And that's one of the, it was the, it was the thing that lit me up was being in service to other people, right? That's why I was able to do it for so long because I'm really good at helping and teaching and being a navigator or a guide through a process. And so I love my clients, I love the experience, but at a certain point, it was literally grueling and suffocating to do something that was no longer in alignment with me. The energy fell so flat um, and the frustration started to get so high that I actually jumped ship a couple of times. I burned the boat a couple of times, but my belief systems were not in alignment with my desires yet. And so the net that caught me, the net that appeared, it did appear, but it appeared much lower than what I would have liked it to appear. I had to go through um, some really deep peaks, I mean, valleys, you know, in order to, and then I had to crawl back out, crawl back up out of that because my beliefs were in alignment with my desires. And so when I finally did transition, this is, you know, I burned the boat a couple of times and like then I went through several years where my energy just wasn't in it, um, but it was what I was doing and it was just something to do, but it was like draining me. And then I'd come home after like 10 hours in the heat and, and work on my uh, passion business or create blog posts or to do other things that I was really passionate about because I've been creating content long before I ever started to monetize because it was just what was, it was just what I was called to do, sharing my message. I had no way to monetize it. I had no idea how to monetize it. I just knew that it was what my soul was calling me to do. And I had to have an outlet for this creativity. I had to have an outlet for this spark and for this, uh, expression, right? Um, so what I learned through this process is what I'm going to share with you right now. What I learned was, is that you can actually make the transition very easy. And I worked with coaches before that were like, you just got to draw a line in the sand and jump ship. And as soon as you do, like that's going to up level you. And it does. And it doesn't, it does to a degree, but your belief systems are still your belief systems. So if you jump from a place of fear, um, I mean, you're going to have fear, but let me rephrase it. If you jump from trying to avoid um, what it is you don't like, this is the problem. If you jump trying to avoid what it is you don't like, 
it's going to be a struggle because what you're trying to do is you're trying to resist the present moment. You're trying to resist what is versus just aligning instead of fighting the present moment and trying to leave something that you are not liking. You have the other option, which is to align with where you're going. If you just leave or jump ship or, or, or quit or whatever it is, your nine to five or your corporate job, but your beliefs are not in alignment and you're doing it because you can't take it anymore and your beliefs are not in alignment, then that's still going to catch you wherever your beliefs are. You get to create your own reality in this, right? And so third time was the charm for me because I finally figured it out. And that was that, oh, I don't resist what the current present moment is. And I reframed what my position meant what, as a, my role my, as a realtor meant to me. So I could empower myself again, right? Instead of feeling like a victim. And then I recognized that I had two choices. It's either resist what is and try to run from what is, but running from a place of um, suffocation, feeling suffocated and, and overwhelmed and burned out and, and all of this, which I've done in the past. And it never panned out the way I had hoped. It wasn't until I decided just to align with where I was going make decisions that align with where you are going versus trying to resist where it is where where you're at you can't resist where you're at and align with your where you're going at the same time you have split energy if you do that because your desires are always going to be calling you forward because you're an expansion you're in a, a universe of expansion and you're an expanding being so your desires are always going to be calling you forward but if your beliefs are not in alignment with your desires, then you're going to feel a lot of resistance. And anything that you take action on from that place of resistance is going to really continue to call those experiences towards you until you can clear that resistance, right? Because it's not about fighting against what you don't want, you know, avoiding what you don't want. In Yoga Sutras, we in the, in the yoga philosophy, we call this devsha, right? Like avoiding what you don't want. You can't avoid what you don't want. You just pivot and you align with what you do want. And when I started to just align with what I, what I did want and what I did desire, and I started to get my beliefs on board with my desires, things started to work out for me. Randomly, things started to work out for me. Very serendipitously, things started to work out for me. And all of a sudden, a door would open, an opportunity, and all of a sudden an insight would come in, an idea, a download. All of these things start to happen and I would start to take action on them because they are inspired actions and it aligns me more with my desire, right? And so, I let the real estate stuff just work its way out. I knew at that stage, I didn't have to quote unquote, burn the boat or jump ship. Like a lot of some of my previous mentors even told me I should do. I'm all about responsible entrepreneurship as well, right? What's going to be the path of least resistance for you, right? And so I'm not saying that it's good or bad or that there's a right or wrong way to do it. I'm saying I've tried both and maybe you can resonate with me and maybe you don't. And maybe you'll get something from this video and maybe you won't. But I can say from my experience, when I started to align with where I was going and take actions from that place of inspire, you know, inspiration, inspired actions, sacred actions, actions that invoked some fear, but I did them anyways, because I just started to align myself with the person that already had the thing that I desired, the business that I desired, the lifestyle that I desired, the travel that I desired, the freedom that I desired. And I started to take action from that place. It looked like investing in myself. It looked like hiring mentors. It looked like launching a program. It looked like getting on video more. It looked like calling out my BS on procrastination. It looked like a lot of things. But I started to align my beliefs underlying all of it with the desires so everything matched up. And when that started to happen, things start to happen, okay? And then it was an easy, smooth transition from 
the dreaded nine to five. And to be honest, real estate can oftentimes be more like a, a nine to nine or a seven to 10. Um, because a lot of times you have to be accountable during all crazy hours if you want to get an offer accepted, especially in a competitive market. Um, so yeah, I got to make my own schedule, but it was also very demanding and it wasn't doing what I loved, right? So it was doing something I was masterful at, something I was skillful at, something I was really good at, which is a totally, totally different than doing something that I'm, that I'm being called to do. You know, it's different than my soul mission, right? It's different than my calling and what I'm really feeling called to create in the world. And, you know, it turns out that all of the experiences you have along the way, eventually, you know, all play into where you're going anyways, because I use all the experience from all my businesses, all of them, all the great nuggets of wisdom that I've gained from, and gleaned from all of my experiences are now magically part of what I'm doing now. It works out perfectly including the story I'm telling you now. Um, and so what I was gonna say is how it really played out at the end when I finally transitioned, it was like, I couldn't even tell you the day. It was just like, one day I looked at the board and I was like, that's probably gonna be the last deal that I do. That's probably gonna be the last escrow. Yeah, I think I'll make that the last ex escrow. I think I'll make it the last escrow. There was no more like, what am I gonna do about money? Um, what happens if I don't, close any clients. It's like, what about this? What about that? No, because I already got myself in alignment and on board with my desires and I believed in myself and my beliefs matched my desires and I was raising my energetic frequency because I was really surrendering in faith to this purpose and calling that I know I'm being called forward to, to, to step into. And I could start to set intentions that I would just see manifest for myself very easily. I said, you know, I don't even want to walk away from real estate anymore. I just want it to slowly phase out to where I don't even have to make the decision. Let's just take care of this for me. I don't even want to make the decision. Let's just make it so obvious that my other business is just thriving so much and that it lights me up so much that it absolutely makes zero sense for me to put another minute of energy into my real estate business. And it was just an easy transition like that. And that was it. And that was it. And so my, then my coaching business and my entrepreneur, all, you know, exponentially grew and continued to grow and is still continuing to grow. And it makes absolutely no sense for me to go back to it. It, it just easily phased out of my experience. And so I guess the moral of this story is that you get to create what you want to create in this lifetime based on your intentions and the belief systems that you hold and how you're co-creating with the universe. So you might want to just ask and check in with yourself. Are you more resisting the present moment and resisting what is and resisting current reality and resisting and fighting against something? Or are you more aligning with what it is you truly desire? Because those are two different paths. One's going to be full of struggle and overwhelm and burnout and frustration. And the other one's gonna feel like ease, peace, and flow. And you get to create it with your own thoughts, your energy, your frequency, your intentions, your calling on guidance, and letting it and, and letting your guides and angels and everyone that's assisting you on this journey assist you, creating space for that to occur. They're two different journeys. They're two different journeys. And I have experienced both, which is why I felt called to share this with you today. So if this resonates with you, I'd love to hear your feedback or your comments below this video. And if it really resonates with you and you're ready to dive deep into creating your soul aligned business uh, and freedom based lifestyle, then check out the masterclass below this video, the Soul Aligned Success Masterclass, wherever you happen to be watching this video. Um, you can also always find it in my Instagram bio at Spiritual CEO if you're watching this somewhere other than Instagram. And once you take that masterclass, if that really resonates with you, you'll be invited to hop on a 60 minute deep dive strategy session with me where I help you map out a blueprint for your soul driven business. And then we can go from there. So if this resonates with you, let me know. And I look forward to tuning in with you on another episode very soon. Namaste.